you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, uh -huh. what will it be? Um, I would make us a United States of Africa. Nava? Yes. Do you know that I've heard a lot about you? From where? I'm curious to hear about All about the internet. <laughs> and after uh -huh. seeing you, I think I'm more inspired. Uh, you, you look so young to achieve ah, what you've achieved no, so far. No, no, no. Anyone can achieve anything. That's one thing I've learned. You just need to have the right idea and implement it correctly. You are the one that is changing the narrative of sportswear in Africa. We have to. There's no other person who's going to do it for us. What inspired you to do what you do? A lot of things. One was living abroad and then recognizing that we have these huge assets as a country that you're not taking advantage of. And also just uh, living with athletes and, and seeing how they have so much pressure to be able to just make a, a little money and then it goes to, to, you know, like a lot of people in the community. So I thought, what if we had, what if we took advantage of this one thing that we're really good at? Mm. And then we allow more people to benefit from it. And so that's the, that was the initial thought that led us to here. On behalf of all Africans, <laughs> we want to say thank you for changing the narrative of Africa in your own way. And also on behalf of Africans, we just want to say you are one of the people that inspires many Africans. Thank you very much. I feel like that's a huge honor, but yeah, thank you. Are you born and raised in Kenya? Yes, very much so. I was born here, raised here, went to study a little bit abroad and then came back and now happy to be back home. You know, when good things come out, out of Africa, yeah. we always associate with foreigners. Yes. I, 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 I'm so shocked to see that you're Kenyan. <laughs> well, yeah. I am as Kenyan as they come, so <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. Yeah, so I'm Navalayo Osembo. I am a lawyer and accountant by training. Oh. I did uh, international development and now I'm making shoes. You so you don't have to study, you don't have to work what you studied. That's also the one thing I've learned. Which, especially in this world where people say, show us how many years of experience. Nowadays I'm like, unless something's very technical, like being a doctor, uh, you can learn anything. When I was an undergrad, I did a lot of things. One of my most significant experience was working at a branding company. And that's where I understood the power of a name and a brand. You know, like I don't think I'd ever really figured out why a brand is important mm. and so I worked uh, briefly uh, on an internship at a place in London called Wolf Orleans which I think was very fundamental to understanding why Ender has to be a brand okay. why you know like back then I wasn't putting it two and two together and then when I came back I went to New York I was working with the United Nations. You're working with the United Nations yes. was it your last job? Yes that was my last job See, and then don't don't tell anybody yeah. that i asked you this question right you know <laughs> africans would be like you got the job to work with the u.n yes and you decided to leave and come back to kenya yes is everything okay with your yeah. brain though <laughs> i mean this is a question that so many africans will be asking is everything okay everything is perfect pristine perfect condition everything is perfect. nobody nobody told you that it's something wrong with you for you to leave <laughs> there did. and come back uh, here there were people who thought it was the wrong decision you know oh. but i think i think life is yours you know you get to decide and if you make a mistake it's fine i think one of the things we leave is we get scared of letting go of things which were not belonging to us in the first place mm -hmm. so i said if god gave me this job he'll get me another one you know i just needed to trust in the dream and follow it see something must drive you yeah to leave your work and come back to kenya yes what, what was the inspiration what, what brought you back to kenya by the time i was coming back the business was already picking up pace you know what so kind of business they're the same business so i started it before i left just when i was i was leaving kenya to go to new york so that's when we were discussing of how this thing would work what would happen and so by the time I was on my, I think it was either my third year or when I was approaching my fourth year, the business had grown to such a point that it needed personal attention. So I had to choose which master to serve. See, yeah, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are definitely an entrepreneur when you were in school. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It depends. Maybe. I don't know. Nowadays, I'm just like, I, I do life. That's what I do. You've grown this business to the extent that I'm in Ghana and I've heard about you. That's good. Um, Hi, Ghana. <laughs> We may not. Yeah. You even know him? This guy. 
you, you, uh, see, I'm, I'm in the YouTube video. This guy is too fast. How are you doing? I photo you. You follow me. I really want to know what really inspired Ender. And I was inspired by many things. One was living abroad and the experience of being a black person and saying, okay, you know what, maybe we should show, we should show the world that we are capable, like we can create our own things, you know, because in my opinion, the world can't function without Africa. All the resources, most of the resources are coming from here. And so I feel like we do deserve some respect. No, actually, we do deserve the respect of humanity to, to kind of like be recognized as people who are not just dependent. There are so many false narratives and I wanted to create a positive narrative. And then um, also, um, I grew up around a lot of athletes and I saw just how much there's a financial burden on like one athlete to, you know, like support many people in the community. Mm. And yet when you look at the, the, the companies that are sponsoring these athletes, they're making billions, you know, and I was like, why can't we tap into that billion? And then at least we'll, spread the benefits so that it's not just one person but we are also benefiting yeah from that reputation are the athletes in kenya embracing enda i would say yes you know like uh, we are working with the young and upcoming the ones who are elite already are locked into contracts but they have given us their support you know like basically saying this is something that should have been done we support you and things like that but i think for me it's it's much bigger than just support it's just something that has to be done regardless of who's with me <laughs> or not, we, we just have to do it. I, I know definitely somebody who doesn't speak Swahili uh -huh. want to find out what is Enda. Yes, Enda is, it means go in Kiswahili, it means go. And oh. so when you are, people are cheering on the athletes when they're supporting their team, everybody will be shouting Enda, Enda, Enda. Enda. You know? Oh, so and I can so, ask you all, Una Enda Wapi? Exactly. Ah. <laughs> And that just means going Swahili. So anyone who didn't know now knows a word in Swahili. I definitely want to um, go find out where they make the shoes. I really want to see it myself if yeah. this is really made in Kenya. Will Seeing is believing. Seeing, Seeing is, is believing. believing. That's yeah. the case. So Otherwise, I really want to ask my next questions from there. Yeah. Is that okay? That's very fine. Thank you. the place where we do the manufacturing like basically oh, wow. we put the shoes together and uh, it starts from very basic to the point where you actually have the completed shoe you know I'm so happy to see more women working in here more than men yes 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 same here one of the things we were also talking to the factory was can we you know like promote women and see if we can have more of them maybe because and the, the person <laughs> who got initiative is a woman no but That's also why. you recognize just how much of an impact uh, an income has uh, on a woman for example uh, yeah yes yes you can so this is the the lacing process, the lacing process. yes so basically they're putting the shoes to the laces this is the upper for one of our specific shoe. This is actually the train shoe. This is ripstop nylon and it has a waterproof guard at it. The shoe basically is waterproof. And it's for if you're running in the trail, on the mountain, in water, you know, like rough terrain, this is the shoe for it. But what inspired the design of the shoes? I love this shoe, first I have to say. <laughs> this shoe is inspired by the theory of evolution, which has a home in Kenya, actually. Mm. So as a human species, Homo erectus, like basically as a human species, we became upright people in northern Kenya. Mm. And so that's where uh, I believe the home of running, it's not just saying Kenya has the best runners, but from a humanity perspective, it's also the home of running. So this shoe, if you see here, for example, it has the, the numbers 1470. Four, so this is part of the skull, the name of the skull that was found um, at Kubifora, which yeah. is the, how we've named this shoe. And, and the, the skull... Yeah. The spear is from our logo, it's the, from the coat of arms, you know you have two lions holding a spear and a shield, so that's where it's coming from. This is also, this is actually the imprint of the skull that had the 11470, so it gets to educate people that this shoe, you know like you get to ask what is this, then you learn, oh there was a skull about found in northern Kenya and this was the name of it. The shoe itself is named after that place called Kobifora, so our shoes are not just things people wear, we take time to educate people, tell them a story and leave them more aware of Africa or can our... I, can I tell you something? Yes. This is a real representative of Kenya to the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, well, it, that's the idea, from Kenya to the world. So how many people work in here? It varies between sometimes 22 to 30 people depending on the processes that are going on. 
Wow. Yeah, but if you count the packers and everybody else, we'd pretty much be about 70 people from end to end to make this process happen. Uh, so this is where now you're attaching the midsole with the, uh, with the upper, basically the insole with the upper. It's very important because this, when you're putting a shoe flat, it, it basically it has to be a, a, a stitch that yeah. is vertical, but when you spread it, it's flat. So it's called a, a strobel stitch. So that's what uh, this that's nice what lady is doing. doing. Yeah. So this thing, which you see in most shops selling shoes, but this is more for manufacturing, is called a last. The last is what gives shape to the shoe. the shoe. Because you can see as you finish stitching the upper and the insole together, it doesn't have shape. So the last basically is what determines the, the shape, shape of the shoe. Oh, this is the, the elastic. So it has to be nice and tight, not too tight, not too, so the machine just helps to make sure it's done. Because if you miss it, then you're going to start seeing the, the stitching appearing when, where the sole is supposed to be. So you just have to make sure that it's nice, flat, and when it goes to attachment, everything is concealed underneath. This is now a last And then they give to the woman? Yes. So they just make sure everything is okay, they'll tie the laces, and then now they, they start prepping it for... Um, assembly and then now comes the bit just like painting and any other thing that needs adhesion you have to make sure that there is no impurities at all so you see it's more like a vacuum machine or more like a blower and then now they'll put the initial adhesive you it has better capacity to hold when there is no impurities and then now it's gonna go into a heating machine where the conveyor belt is you have to always maintain the right temperature, otherwise um, you might have issues with the, with the glory. Yeah. So it goes through a series of tunnels where they're cooling and heating and cooling, heating and cooling, but this is the first step. So once they're blown, they're made, they're put on the tray just to make sure each shoe is by itself and there's also, they're not collecting any dirt by well, themselves. Well, I want to know, like, where do you get a raw materials from? Mm -hmm. So we get the raw materials, it's a mix. For some shoes we get them from Kenya, for some we get them from Asia. Oh, okay. Yes. Because some of the things are, we're still, and that's part of the assumptions we had when we started making shoes. We thought, oh, we could just get rubber. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you discover that not all rubber is equal. You know, there's some things that you need to do. Uh, if, for example, you're making a performance footwear, and that's mm. not, readily done in Kenya so if we build enough capacity that's definitely the thing that we're going to to move here so now the shoes will come from the heater okay and then they'll go slowly through the conveyor belt and so then it's a series of trying to make sure that the adhesive you don't just apply once you apply over and over, over again yeah. at different temperatures and making sure everything is is good wow. and then now you have another machine called the gauge marker it's also just making sure that um, everything is in line because as I said a shoe is alignment. Mm. I'm sure when you see a shoe that's looking fun, the lines, are not, you'll be able to tell. And so uh, this equipment is helping us to make sure that uh, even the process that we did before, the last thing, even though we went through the machine and other people did it, that it's been done correctly. And then while she's applying the adhesive, he's busy uh, with that machine checking sure that the alignment is okay. And so now we are also still cleaning and making sure that the adhesive is correct. If there's any adhesive that is showing where it's not supposed to show, they remove it. And then it's at this particular point that we also start putting um, also adhesive on the upper, like on the, on, the lost, on the side that has been lasted as well. Who is going to combine the two shoes together because I feel like I cannot wait anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to see a full shoe. Patience, patience, my patience friend. Is the key, yeah? Patience uh, is the key. All right. Yeah, so these are called, these footbeds, the green things, they are, they are custom made for our shoes. Okay. So just to make sure that when the sole is going to be fitted inside, it's like a really, it's a good fit. That way we make sure that basically what we are doing now is making sure that the fit is exact. Because there's five, for example, five, five and a half, six, six and a half. Mm. All that matters and you just want to make sure that um, all that process is done correctly. So what he's doing is this machine is called a gauge marker and he's basically checking the alignment of the shoe. You want to make sure 
that the shoe is properly aligned, that is associated with fit because you want when you put on that shoe you feel like it fits you properly. So this machine is very good for that. He'll also use a special type of pen to draw around the shoe. That's kind of like helping the people who are going ahead with the adhesive to know the boundaries of where to continue and where to stop. Again, we don't want shoes that are showing glue or things like that. So we are trying as much as possible to keep that under control and this machine is important for that. Before coming here, I yes. thought making shoes is all about melting a piece of rubber and then you just dry it up and you're good to go. I wish, but I the, wish. I, I really love the quality of these shoes and I love the design, yeah. Thank you. Are you the same person who really designed this? Actually, we have an excellent designer who's on our team. He's young, he's very talented, and I can't wait for you to meet him. So and he's Kenyan? Very much Kenyan. Wow, I would love yeah. to speak to him too. Yeah, yeah. If we create the opportunities, you'll find the people with the skills. My brother, I heard yes. that you designed this shoe, man. Yes, I'm um, part of the team that designed it. Why, you learned how to design shoes, is that your major? Right, yeah. So part of it actually was, uh, part of, of course, in school, I did uh, product design. But of course, more of the learning has been in now in my experience as a shoe designer for Enda. How do you feel when you see people wearing something that you designed? Oh man, so, so, so proud, so proud. And so to see like, uh, you know, even the shoes, uh, people from all over the world actually wearing. And uh, being part of that team that comes up with those shoes. It's such a befitting moment. I just want to say that you are inspiring and keep inspiring the world, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. At this particular point, the shoe is finally ready to be put together. Basically, the upper and the midsole are ready to be put together. So we first, we'll do it by a manual process. Note that the line that had been indicated by the team that was doing the gauge marking is a good indicator so that if you miss it, then you know that you've missed something and so everything basically comes together the lasting the putting together the cleaning uh, ultimately you want a shoe that um, you know is put together nicely and then he'll kind of press the edges firmly to make sure it's good after that it now goes to the machine that will do a proper job of it. Auto automatic exactly so that's just making sure now that the grip is as as good as it can be you know like we've done the absolute best in terms of making sure it's not falling apart when someone is wearing it and running with it. So that, so which means that this is the final product? No, then it goes to the chiller, right? Okay, so because you have to, now you have to cool it down. Cool it bring down, it down to, because a lot of each process. Yes, 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 yes. So now once that process is done, they put the shoe in the shoe bed, they compress it, and then once it's removed, it goes to the chilling area. And so, yeah, this is a cooling machine. It comes out of there. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so chill, man. Ah, it is. It is actually cool. Now, your Ender shoes are ready. Ah, yeah, it is. I'm like, am I, I can take a video in a video, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what makes Ender shoes unique from other shoes then? What makes our shoes unique is first, the fact that you're making them in Kenya and Africa. Mm. You know, there's so many other places you can make it, but I think we have to commit ourselves to building the continent, building the economy. Second, as I said, they are all pieces of art. They are telling a story, right? Yeah. It's not just a typical shoe that you buy. This shoe will tell you about um, the skull. It will tell you about Kubifora. Uh, it will tell you Harambe at the bottom, which means we all work together. Oh. It, it gives you, you know, it gives you things that you, you actually feel as a human being connected to Kenya See, and connected to the brand. I, I, I'm not a good runner, yeah? <laughs> but so Everyone is, runs. No, yeah, everyone, everyone runs, <laughs> yeah? But I know that I'm not a very good one. But I don't yeah. know if I ever buy uh, Ender shoes, I'll get a good medal. No, 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 you will. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, we are trying to make Ender shoes available. In fact, we want them to be the shoes for when you see someone wearing them, you feel like this person must be from Africa, you know? I, I think because we have that ability to infuse our culture in the I, I feel like every African athlete needs to endorse Ender, you know? I'm endorsing it. From today, I think I'll be the next Olympic champion. Good, good. <laughs> The shoes come from the chiller, they are collected here, and then these wonderful ladies clean them just to make oh. sure any accent of glue or um, the, mark, the gauge marker pen, it's all That's removed. How to clean it. 
Ja. Ja. Så så. Hun er hun er så hun er lidt så hele. Good job. Ay ay ay. My Swahili is on point. Can I can I wash? So like this. Yes. So I think this is already clean, no? Oh, already clean? Yes. So which one is not clean? This one. So you see? What do you clean? This. This one. Yeah. So you're right. This is almost like an eraser. You're rubbing fast. Like this? No. Here, like the line. It looks easy, but it's not easy, my brother. This is why you need to respect people that work here, man. I thought it's just. Wash no. your shoe and you're no, born. No, no. Work harder, work harder. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I, I'm so sorry. How, how much? Yo, this is a lot of work that I need to pay for. <laughs> so I don't have any money, yeah. but uh, I sent to Sana. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then once we get there, we come to the packing. Further cleaning and packing. In case they miss something there, okay. you find it here. So here is now cleaning, drying, packing. And then they also the bags, uh, these ones have been made in Nairobi, we ship them here. So the bag is important because um, it first, this is, a, it's called a kanga. A kanga is a traditional Swahili fabric. So we also give you a touch of Kenya. And then for, at the back of each, we write what the, this, for example, this shoe was inspired by the superb styling bird. Mm -hmm. So someone gets to learn about that. And at the end, we also basically, build the community so for every two percent of the purchase price we donate it to community initiatives so someone it's not just buying the shoe it's more of um, letting people know that this is a commitment we've made as a company so whatever you buy this what percentage goes two oh, percent of the purchase it's yes. even written yes we write it so that it's a commitment we this is, also hold this ourselves is, this accountable this is why i need to pause each and every one of you to get in their shoes today. I mean, you don't have to be a runner before you no, wear no, in their no, shoes. No, 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 no. You don't. Time. Even for working, for I mean, regular exercise. out in the morning and all of that, we need in their shoes. Yes. It's made in Africa and I'm going to tell you that it's by force. You know the slogan already. What is the biggest challenge that you face um, establishing this in here? Of course, the biggest challenge was finding the capital to, to be able to do this. We tried to get money through the traditional ways of funding. We weren't able to do that. So we ultimately decided to uh, raise money through crowdfunding, you know, through the internet. So we sell product in advance, people pay in advance, and that's how we got the money to get started. Are you saying that Kenyan businessmen never believed in the dream? I think the financial infrastructure is not catered to small businesses. I think everybody is asking, especially when you have an idea, they'll ask you where's your savings, where's your assets, where is your financials for your business to show you've operated successfully. None of these things are things we have. Sometimes you just have that idea and so the system, the financial system is not really favorable to SMEs, that's what I would say. Will you say that the opportunities in Africa for Africans? Of course. This is a living example, yeah? I would say there's a lot of opportunities. And if you look around the world, everybody's coming to Africa. This is despite years of colonization, years of extraction, years of, you know, things being removed from the continent. And despite all that, people are still coming. That should show us that they're still good here and that they still, you know, if other people are coming to get it, we should also fight to, to be able to get it for ourselves as well. Will you say that starting Africa's first, I mean, sportswear in terms of shoes, yeah. Um, in Africa, was it really worth it? It was so much worth it. I would say I wish someone started it a long time ago <laughs> so that I was creating a competing brand, you know. But it's, it's definitely worth it. It's what you see, the opportunities it creates, the pride it creates, and I'm like, we need to have more things that we are proud of. And how does this make you feel? I'm happy with my life. <laughs> I feel like I am fulfilled, you know, like I'm doing something which if I get to the end of life, I don't have any questions. I said, can this be done? I said, let's try. And I tried it. Whatever the outcome, I tried it. And I'm happy that I got to that point. If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, uh -huh. what will it be? Um, I would make us a United States of Africa. I would put everybody under one, you know, like, let us work as a unit as opposed to fragments i mean saying this which means that there is a reason behind it. yes what is the reason why you say the this? reason is simple our bargaining power is better and that's for everything 
all our resources. It's easy, let's say for example, to step on DRC if you know you're going to get it from Rwanda or to step on Kenya if you're going to get it from South Africa. However, since the resources are coming from here, what happens in a monopoly, if I was to say that? It means we dictate and we say, you know what, we actually think the value of Ghana's cocoa is this much, take it or leave it. We actually think the price of titanium or cobalt is this much, take it or leave it. The world needs our resources, but as long as we are fragmented, then we get crumbs, you know. It's the same thing with the athletic footwear industry, where we were just getting a few athletes winning prize money. They're not even in manufacturing, they're not. So we get the small things, but when you stop and look around, you're like, hey, we're actually the people who can dictate how things go on. And I think when we realize that as Africans, not only will we change, but I think the world order will change as well. Is there any day that you're trying to fetch maybe raw materials from a different African country yeah. and has been a major challenge? Yeah, yeah, it has. I mean, I was trying to see if we could source things from Rwanda, we could source from Ethiopia. But I think ultimately the tariffs, uh, there, there's just small challenges you find across, you know. When you go to the border, maybe the... I was really hopeful that the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement would make changes. And maybe, I don't know, sometimes you say, let's be patient. No, but I'm also like, patience, it's painful because you're losing so much. Whereas I wished that once they signed it, I could just walk into Rwanda and say, okay, let's do this and work together. I think we have so much more to benefit. I think from this video, I'm going to request uh, a meeting with the um, CEO of um, the African Free Trade. Yeah. Because I've been interviewing so many people and I also complain about the exact same thing, which mm -hmm. means that the initiative of the African Free Trade is just on paper, not on the ground. It is on paper, but I would also say, I would be like, I think for it to work, we need to make it work, you know, like I think there's so much the office can do, but ultimately the countries need to decide to make it operational because you're relying on political will. And so there's a speech of uh, Thomas Sankara, he made it a long time ago, but I'm just repeating what he said, you know, and he was talking about we have a better chance together when we're united. And I really wish that African countries could just wake up and agree. You know, the same way you woke up and came to Mombasa, we just say, okay, I'm coming to Ghana, no tariffs, let's do it. You're coming to Kenya, no tariffs, let's do it. I don't think it should be as complicated as we've made it. Where can we get Enda shoes? www.endasportswear.com You see, I, I'm going to force each and every one of you, <laughs> I'm not even going to beg you, that I have 940,000 subscribers and I want a hundred of you to order from Enda. Am I going to get commission out of it? We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you so much guys. for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Be part of this awesome family as we tell African stories across Africa. My name is Mr. Ghana Baby. See you on the next one. I am my peace out.